Welcome to Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton's Range Safety Certification Course. In this presentation, you will learn to occupy, utilize, and clear from ranges and training facilities aboard Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton. This course will take approximately 40 minutes of your time. Please note that the slides will advance automatically and allow you to follow along with the accompanying handouts. Upon completion of all testing for this course, a roster of all participants will be posted on the listed website. If you are unable to access the website, send an email to the listed address with your student information. OICs and RSOs have to be assigned in writing on the ORM. It is required that OICs be certified with all weapons and RSOs be qualified with all weapons. Please note that if you are part of the AA&E chain that delivered ammunition to your range, you cannot OIC that range. To do so would be a conflict of interest and break the chain of custody. Range Operations Division falls under the Assistant Chief of Staff, Operations and Training. Beneath the division, you will find Range Control and Range Operations. Within Range Control, you will find the Range Control Officer, Range Safety Specialists, and Range Scheduling. Under Range Operations, you will find Long Rifle, which is the call sign for the supervisors of real-time activities aboard Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton. If you would like to further enhance the reality of your training, contact Training Support Division at the number listed, where they can assist you with a variety of services and support. Should you need to make face-to-face -face contact with us at the Range Operations Division, you'll find us at the Base Air Station, Building 2399, Room 209. For phone contact, several phone numbers have been listed on this slide. They include the Range Control Officer, the Range Safety Specialists, the Long Rifle Firing Desk, the Operations Officer, and Range Scheduling. For submission of TARS, overlays, FAC and UAV brief sheets, or any other scheduling questions, please use the email address shown to submit them. The two primary orders used to regulate all activity aboard Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton ranges and training areas are DA PAM 38563, also known as Marine Corps Order 3570.1 Bravo. This is a joint order used by both the Marine Corps and the Army to regulate all land ranges. This order is the basis for our local base order, P3500.1 November. Note that both orders apply to all personnel, units, and organizations training aboard Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton. It is required that all OICs and RSOs have read and understand both orders. When scheduling your training, please note that different levels of priority apply to various types of units. Marine Corps formal schools can schedule up to 180 days out. This includes SOI and AAS Battalion. Marine Expeditionary Units and HIMAR Artillery may schedule up to 120 days out. 90 days is the maximum for active duty units and Marine Reserves. Other Service Reserve Units and National Guard have a 60-day maximum and must submit these requests through the RSU. All other units and civilians have a maximum 30-day scheduling window. Civilian organizations operating under a real estate license must submit their requests through Ops Division. For co-use, and if authorized, units must submit a request via email no later than five working days prior to an event, in order to be considered for approval. Note that the mitigation of all safety concerns must be explicitly addressed in the email. When hike or convoy routes are required as a part of training, electronic overlays must be submitted to range scheduling prior to RIFMAS approval. All waivers must be submitted no later than 30 days prior to the event. Examples of waiver requirements are civilians, experimental weapons or ammunition, or changes to range regulations. Be advised that if you schedule a training area, this does not include the separate training facilities within that area. For example, 
If you schedule Kilo Training Area, you have not scheduled either 25 Area Combat Town or Kilo 2 Combat Town. You must schedule these facilities separately. When training, non-scheduled units must remain clear of all aviation facilities, with a minimum buffer distance of 500 meters. Importantly, please note that all scheduling attempts under seven days from the event will be disapproved. When in training areas, units must maintain positive radio communication with long rifle at all times. If positive radio communication is not maintained, the unit will be directed to leave the training area. All units and agencies must maintain and monitor that communication with long rifle when they are in training areas, offshore operating areas, beaches, training facilities, ranges, and or operating within Camp Pendleton's special use airspace. Long Rifle has the final authority on all real-time matters pertaining to range safety, and has the authority to put any unit or agency into a check-fire status or cancel any operations in the interest of safety. Units must gain and maintain positive radio communication with Long Rifle prior to departing any hardball road. The range safety frequencies are the primary ground safety net at 40.35, the alternate ground safety net at 30.35, the base air safety net at 310.3, both 249.9 and 255.2 .2 used by forward air controllers, and 123.2 used by civilian aircraft. Positive communication must be maintained on the frequencies listed or utilizing XTS Motorola 5000 radios on the Tango Net. Cell phones are not authorized for use to meet safety communication requirements at any time. Prior to being granted permission to access any base range or training area, all units or agencies must establish communication with Long Rifle. Check-in must be conducted by the range safety officer. Units or agencies on ranges must identify themselves by their unit or agency name and the range number. Units or agencies in training areas must identify themselves by their unit or agency name and the training area. For example, Long Rifle, this is 1-4, requesting permission to occupy range 408. Note that no personal call signs are to be used. Periodic radio checks are required by all units. Units or agencies in training areas conducting non-live fire exercises must conduct a radio check every hour, on the hour, at the top of the hour. Units or agencies on live fire ranges, including SESAMs, must conduct radio checks every hour, on the hour, at the bottom of the hour. When utilizing bivouac and or ammo guard status, units or agencies placed in a bivouac or ammo guard status must maintain and monitor the net throughout the night and contact Long Rifle prior to the start of any event on the next day. When ACU-5 is conducting LCAC operations, prior to departing the ACU-5 ramp, the RSO will contact the tower with the following. Last name, last four, number of craft, and intentions. The tower will then contact Long Rifle. Prior to landing, the RSO will contact the tower and give feet dry, including time and location, and will provide a six-digit grid. The tower will pass that information on to Long Rifle. Units transitioning the beach will stop and request permission from Long Rifle prior to crossing the LCAC ramp. In the event of an emergency, the RSO will immediately contact Long Rifle and provide detailed information regarding the event. Note that all medevacs must be reported to Long Rifle. Emergency calls in the training area are coordinated by Long Rifle. There are three medevac categories, emergency or urgent, priority, and routine. All medevacs must be reported to Long Rifle promptly regardless of their category. If radio communication fails, Units or agencies shall use any available telephone to contact Long Rifle. Note that any red pyrotechnic is designated as the alternate signal for an emergency. 
during a medevac, all units on the long rifle safety net shall cease transmissions on that net until the medevac has been completed or another unit requires medevac support. Due to our Southern California location and the proximity of urban areas situated around Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton, wildland fires have the potential of not only interrupting training, but endangering surrounding communities. Each year we have over 200 wildland fires in our training areas. This number does not include fires in the Zulu, Whiskey, and Quebec impact areas. Wildland fires are not only potentially devastating to life and property, but have the potential to cease any training affected by the fire. A fire danger rating, or FDR, is a device used by the Camp Pendleton Fire Department to assess risk and manage those risks as they relate to the potential fire hazard on the base. The commanding officer will then take that recommendation and publish restrictions to training based upon the prevailing conditions. The FDR applies to all organizations and individuals aboard Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton. Note that Long Rifle will notify RSOs and OICs of the FDR and of changes as they occur. The Fire Danger Rating covers a span from 0 to 30 or low, which equates to little or no hazards, all the way up to 81 to 100 or extreme at which time most, if not all, training involving ordnance may have to cease. Details concerning restrictions can be found at the ROD SharePoint site. In the situation where a fire does occur, all fires are to be reported whether or not it was started by your unit. Note that personnel will not generally engage in firefighting. Unit leaders must place the greatest amount of importance on personal safety. Under no circumstances will personnel attempt to fight a fire in an impact area. Upon discovering a fire, the senior person present should take the following steps. Determine if the using unit can extinguish the fire. Evacuate all personnel that are in danger. Inform long rifle of fire size and location. Provide cause and type. And remain in a safe location subject to the orders of the fire department who is en route. Camp Pendleton is the home to a multitude of endangered and threatened plant and animal species. It is the OIC and RSO's responsibility to ensure that all personnel under their control thoroughly understand any and all environmental concerns in their area of operation. Failure to do so can result in a loss of training area, loss of training, and potential disciplinary action resulting in fines or criminal prosecution. It is essential to consider environmental concerns when planning training operations and exercises. Prior to any activity involving soil excavation, grading, filling, or digging of fighting positions, units must receive approval from the NEPA branch at Base Environmental. Contact any of the listed personnel to obtain clearance for these activities. When conducting refueling activities, units must adhere to the following guidelines. Use existing access roads to all sites. No digging or grading is allowed at any site without prior approval from the Assistant Chief of Staff, Environmental Security. Secondary containment for refueling operations must be constructed using sandbags or some other implement over which impermeable material is draped and secured. All sites are to be left in their original condition after each refueling operation. For example, no permanent tanks, containment berms, etc. Units choosing to use the designated sites will not be required to seek additional environmental approval. <laughs>